Marion Max is a film that blindsided me more than any film has in a long time. It's honestly one of the most bizarre and real movies I've seen in a while, with extremely heavy topics that almost made me cry, coupled with the very witty, dark humor which I audibly laughed at. On the surface, you would assume this movie would be for kids, with the whimsical nature of the trailer and the fact that it is stop motion. And even the premise alone sounds like something out of a whimsical children's book. You know, a child dealing with issues at home, she was desperate for friends so she ended up writing to a random man in New York who just happened to write back and they formed a happy friendship but boy it goes way deeper than that we get to talks of depression alcoholism parental neglect abuse bullying being normal I feel like this movie is a lot to do with that aspect how utterly cruel normality is and what it does to us as humans most of us humans are taught to believe that we need to stay within a certain box of normality and once you are outside of that box you're looked it differently. You become an outcast, isolated from everyone around you. Just take my colored hair, for example. I know it's kind of a dumb example, but it, it, it's an example. You know, ever since I started coloring my hair, I have gotten dirty looks and snide remarks. You guys know how it'd be. Now, sure, that does mostly have to do with the fact that I live in a small town with a bunch of rednecks, but it's just a very small example of something that people would not consider normal. Maybe you walk different or talk different. Maybe you're a quiet person. Maybe you were born with a brown birthmark on your forehead. Maybe you were born with Asperger's and you weren't even aware of it your entire life. But as most people hopefully come to learn, normality is a stupid construct that is just an excuse to have outsiders. And what this movie shows is what real people are. And I love that about this movie. It's a journey of acceptance, self-discovery, and more importantly, an unlikely friendship of an old fat Jewish man in New York and a young girl who lives in Australia. Before we delve into the depressing things that lie within this movie, let's talk about something else. Something that isn't so depressing. You're balding and you know it. Every day there's a new strand of hair that falls out of your head and you look in the mirror and wonder, when is it all gonna go away? Well, let me tell you something, today is not that day. Today, it's time to change. With Keeps, you can stop that now. Keeps is an online subscription service that I'm sure you've heard about that helps men keep their hair. They offer clinically proven treatments to combat the symptoms of hair loss and treatments are sent directly to your door. You guys know that two out of three men start experiencing hair loss by the time that they're 35? It's never too early to start caring about your hair. And if you care about your hair, you're gonna need some keeps. Keeps even has an amazing 24 seven support system with expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to make sure that your hair goals are achieved. Hair loss stops with keeps. To get 50% off your order, you need to head to keeps.com slash bionic pig to get 50% off your first order and your hair loss treatment. Do it today. Marion Max was actually based on a true story. The director, Adam Elliott, actually had a 20 year long pen pal friendship with an old Jewish man who happened to have Asperger's. So this movie starts out with a beautiful intro. The entire intro is just close ups of beautifully, meticulously made clay pieces. And it's so satisfying to see the up close detail. So the movie starts out introducing Mary, a young girl who lives in a suburban area in a town in Australia. She has a birthmark on her forehead that's the color of poo. And how the movie portrays the the naive, innocent childhood is so well done that it's heartbreaking to watch. Doing? How her father always drinks Irish cream and they emphasize the cream to give the idea that most children would not realize it's actually an alcoholic drink, but just a creamy drink. Also, whenever the narrator described how Mary saw her mother, she said that she was always wobbly and tested cooking sherry. And her mom told her that sherry is an adult tea that needs constant testing. Also, her mother borrows many things and her dad stuffs roadkill. So safe to say her parents aren't the best people in the world, but her innocence tells her that her parents aren't really that bad because she isn't aware. I'm sure many people could relate to this part of the movie. And Mary's favorite cartoon was called The Noblets. And the reason for this is because everyone was brown and everyone was friends with each other. God damn it, going through this movie again, it's just gonna kill me, I swear to God. So one day, Mary and her mother were at the post office and Mary's mother was busy borrowing things. Yay. So Mary found a phone book of New York and started browsing the names, thinking of who these people were and what kind of lives they had in America. And the main question in her mind is where babies come from in America, because apparently she was told by her grandfather that babies come from the bottom of beer glasses in Australia. Wow. 
That's depressing. So she decides to write to someone in America and ask them where babies come from, and that someone happened to be Max. So Max lives in the bustling downtown of New York, and what most movies portray is this beautiful, colorful, lively city. And this movie is made in black and white, which I love. Everything in Max's world is bleak, bland, and boring. Max loves the novelets just like Mary, and his diet basically consists of eating what he calls chocolate hot dogs. Everything seems to be black and white in his life, but when he opens his mailbox, the only piece of mail that wasn't actually gray is the letter that Mary sent to him. Max ended up reading the letter and proceeded to have a panic attack, but after calming down, he ended up writing back to her. And this is basically how the movie tells the entire story is just through their back and forth conversation. So Max tells her about how he's overweight and he goes to a fat people's anonymous class, how a psychiatrist says that his brain is not healthy, he has an invisible friend, he also created the chocolate hot dog recipe, oh yeah, and that his dad left him when he was young and his mom killed herself when he was six. <coughs> just gonna just gonna ram that one right in the nose, huh? He goes on talking about how he stopped believing in God because he read a lot of books and he realized that the only reason people believe in God is because it answers many complicated questions. And as the movie goes on, you start to realize the mental struggles that Max deals with steadily. For example, in the first letter, he talks about getting attacked by a bird when he was younger. So in the spring, he always wears a helmet with eyes on his head to scare birds away. And Max says he doesn't understand why people laugh at him. He also talks about how people confuse him. And he has trouble understanding some of the things that people do. You know, why do they litter? Why do they do things that directly harm the world? Very logical thoughts that he can't wrap his head around. But he ends up confiding everything to Mary. But unfortunately, Mary's mother sees the letter first, and I guess it would make sense if a grown man was writing to your daughter that you would uh, be a little bit freaked out about it. So she ends up throwing it away. Hey, fellas, you got room for one more bag? Show sure, Mrs. Dinkle, hop in. But before Mary's mother throws it away, she ends up snatching it from her and ends up reading the letter. And in a big excitement, she writes back to him on a paper that she stole from some pork chops. I, I guess they just, they just don't have paper. And since her mom doesn't want them talking anymore, she says to send her future mail to her neighbor who is afraid of the outside, which in her words is a disease called homophobia. God damn it, this movie is so funny. So Mary goes on to talk about how she does not have any friends and she gets bullied for her birthmark and the fact that she doesn't have any buttons on her coat, which bullying is something I'm sure plenty of people still deal with today. Yes, today at school. Hey, yo, what the fuck? She gets bullied for things completely out of control. She ends up dripping tears on her letter and asks for Max to help her. And she ends up sending him some snacks in a pom-pom, which he puts on his hat and again, the color switch I love so much because Max puts the pom-pom on his hat and that color represents not only the difference in lives that they lead, but also the happiness that spreads over to his life from Mary. But unfortunately, whenever Mary asked if Max has ever been teased when he was younger, it brought up a bunch of buried memories and it threw him into a PTSD panic. This pretty much happens every letter that she sends. Something happens in that letter that makes him have a panic attack, but he ends up collecting himself and gives Mary advice on how to deal with the bully. He tells her to tell him that the birthmark on her forehead will give her complete control of all the chocolate when she gets to heaven, which is honestly hilarious. So Max ends up writing back again, and this is where we start seeing more and more of the issues that he has. He talks about not understanding social cues and norms, and he doesn't understand how being honest can be considered rude, as in telling an old lady that she smells like urine or farting in an elevator and admitting that it was you who did it. He also talks about how he has trouble physically being able to smile however he smiles inside of his brain. You really start seeing the stuff that Max deals with on the mental level. So now we're back to Mary and she says the advice that Max gave her about the bully ended up working and that she's going to save money to go see him. And then, you know, more sad stuff. She talks about how uh, her mom calls her fat and that she's going to grow up to be a heifer. God damn it, this movie makes me so sad and mad at the same time. But this is where Max loses his mind completely. And the reason he loses his mind is the fact that Mary asked him about sex because she's curious how it works and she is interested in a boy. And this literally causes Max's brain to break from the stress of that because again, it brought up old memories which has to do with this condition. Like giving a girl who worked at the vet a cat rectal monitor because he assumed that was appropriate. He was completely confused on the idea of love and how it worked. He could definitely feel love, but he was not able to articulate it correctly. And since he had a huge 
huge mental breakdown, he was sent to the doctor and given a bunch of medication. And while he was dealing with this big mental break, Mary took it as a sign that maybe he just didn't want to talk to her anymore and completely unaware of what he was dealing with. So she started feeling really bad about herself. However, something big happened in Max's life. Well, I mean, first of all, he did accidentally kill a mime with this AC unit falling on top of him. Could have just built a ceiling. A mime ceiling? No. Oh, no. They ended up excusing him because he wasn't mentally well. And then right after that, he won the lottery, bought himself a lifetime supply of chocolate and the complete novel collection, and then just gave the rest of the money to the old lady he lived next to. And since all of this happened, Max completed two of his biggest life goals, getting all the chocolate he could ever want and getting all of the novel collection. He finally decided, hey, it's time to write back to Mary because his third goal in life is to have a real friend which happened to be Mary. Max ends up writing back and telling her about his massive anxiety attacks that he has. And also that he just found out that what he has is actually called Asperger's syndrome, or as he likes to refer to it as being an Aspie. And this is where that big question I mentioned in the beginning of the video is, what it means to be normal and what do people consider normal? After he found out about his condition, the doctor ended up telling him that maybe someday there will be a cure but Max didn't appreciate this. He felt as though there was nothing wrong with him and that he likes the way he is. He took pride in being an Aspie. Like, why is it considered not normal to other people to have Asperger's? In his eyes, he is normal. Sure, he has to deal with issues that other people don't have to deal with, but that doesn't mean that he's not normal and he needs fixing. And this is where things go terribly wrong in the future. But we'll get to that later. So in response to Max telling Mary that he actually had no way of crying no matter how hard he tried, Mary ended up sending Max her own tears. God damn it, this movie's so sad. But as years Years went by, they sent letters back and forth. Max found a way to cope with her letters by taking a break every time he started feeling some anxiety about what she wrote or what she asked. He also filed every letter neatly to calm his nerves. And when everything started looking up, Mary's dad had to die from getting swept away into the ocean. Wonderful. But since Mary was learning so much about Asperger's just by being friends with Max, she dedicated her life to learning more about the mental issue and how to find a cure. And while she was at college, College, she was bullied for her birthmark once again. So one day she decided to use all that money that she saved up to go see Max and get the birthmark removed instead, which she instantly regretted. Oh yeah, to make matters worse, uh, Mary's mom died from drinking formaldehyde that was next to her sherry drink. Dear God movie, j just give me a break, please. But on the bright side, Mary did end up getting married to her Greek childhood neighbor. Her life technically in a way was looking up. She was building self confidence she was shining at college. She eventually ended up writing a book in honor of Max called Dissecting the Asperger's Mind. And let's just say this is where shit hits the fan. Max did not take that very well, the fact that she used his face and his name in a book about him. Because Max does not feel like he has a problem. Regardless of how everything Mary was doing was in order to help Max, he is someone who did not feel like help was necessary for him. He was happy with who he was, so he felt completely completely betrayed and insulted. And since he could not express his anger properly, he ripped out the letter M from his typewriter and sent that to Mary, signifying that he will never type her name again. And this was soul crushing for Mary. She ended up burning every single one of her books before any of them even sold. She fell into a deep depression and alcoholism. She even started seeing her own mom in the mirror. Her husband even ended up leaving her to go live with his pen pal who happened to be an old man on a farm. Every day, Mary checked her mail, depressed and sad, looking for Max to finally accept her apology. Apology. And finally, after much self-reflection, Max did something he has never done. He forced himself to make a smile and sent Mary every single one of the noblets from his noblet collection. But when that box of noblets sat at the front door without her going to grab it in her depression, she decided it was time to end it, literally. She has a handful of Valium after drinking a shitload of sherry with a noose around her neck. Come on, man. You're just going to jump straight to 100 sadness. Holy shit. And she's pregnant. Oh, wonderful. 
Oh, great. She's going to commit suicide while she's pregnant. And the package Max sent is at the front door. Oh, movie, you're going to kill me. I swear to God. However, at the last second, there was a knock at the door. The old man from next door, who the entire movie was afraid to go outside, ended up saving her life by telling her that she is a package from Max. Oh, thank God. I thought this movie was about to get even sadder somehow. It's not going to get sadder, right? right? So Max says something amazing about self-acceptance, that if you were stranded on a desert island all by yourself, you would have to accept yourself because that's all you have. You can't choose what you're born with, but you can choose your friends. And he ends it saying that he hopes that they will meet someday. So we skip one year later and Mary opens the door to finally meet Max. She is in his apartment after all these years, this entire movie, we've been waiting for them to meet. He's dead. Oh my god, he's dead. He's on- yeah, he's dead. God damn it! But this movie has, I guess you could say, a pretty bittersweet ending. Because even though they never truly got to meet, and even though he's literally sitting there dead on the couch, Max died with a smile on his face. Something that he was never able to do. Mary holds his dead hand and sees all of the letters that she wrote to him plastered all over his wall. And that makes her happy, obviously. And not only that, but she did end up having the child that she actually was going to lose by killing herself. I mean, I, I don't I don't really know how that alcoholism is going to affect it, but whatever. And that's how the movie ends. Dear Lord, this movie be heavy. This movie be heavy, baby. Well, thank you everyone for watching this video. I'm sorry you couldn't see my beautiful face. I am quite sick, if you could tell by my voice. But I am pushing through yeah, and, 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 and what's the word? Persevering? That's a good word for it. But if you like the video, please make sure to subscribe and tell your friends, uh, especially your mommy. Your mommy. Ooh. Bye.